Hello there. My name is Patrick, or some of you may know me as Tan, and this is the first episode of my guide to building your own PC. Now, I get a lot of questions about how to do this, or where to start, or advice on different graphics cards, different processors, and this, that, and the other. So this is my way of responding to you, to make a video series explaining how I would do it and what my thought process is through it. It'll also explain the parts of the PC, what to look for in parts, what not to look for, uh, what's myths, what's facts, reasons why you should build your PC, advantages over the PC, the cons of PCs, and all the stuff in between. So anyway guys, I suppose we get started and we'll go over why you would build your own PC in the first place. Now, also, before we move on, I'd like to point out that I know the irony of using a console games avatar, namely the Halo Reach one, to show off PC gaming is a bit odd. So don't point that out. So now, to move on to the actual pros of building your own PC. So, some of the advantages are you get a lot better graphics. In other words, the performance level is much, much higher. So you can like render games out beautifully. Uh, you get a lot more graphics options and a lot more graphics technology like DX11, things like such as tessellation, variable shadows, real-time shadows, and just the resolution of the screen. I mean, it makes things a lot clearer and a lot easier to see and actually makes it easier to play because your eyes aren't being strained. Now, one of the other pros is that you get a lot higher frame rates. Most console games are locked to 30 frames per second at 720p. Now, on PC, your frame rate is whatever your computer can output. Ideally, you want 60 frames a second. Now, Call of Duty, however, on the console, that's the smoothest game. You've noticed it plays very smoothly. That's because it runs at 60 frames per second, or very near it. Now, on PC, because your frame rate is dictated by how fast your you know, computer can render the frames, you could be any frames. You could be as low as 2, if your computer is not powerful enough. But then you just turn down your graphic settings and you get higher. Ideally, you can run every game in 1080p at 60 frames per second. And trust me, playing games like Grand Theft Auto at 60 frames a second is amazing. Now, another thing about PCs is that the controls are very accurate. The mouse and keyboard input can be ridiculously refined. Now, a lot of people complain that I can't play on PC. I don't like the mouse and keyboard. Trust me, if you're playing a shooter, for example, it does not matter how good, how fast, and how accurate you are on the thumbsticks. You can be at least five times faster and more accurate on the PC. The precision of the mouse with the power of the, like the multiple buttons of the keyboard, you can do anything in gaming. Now, there are certain games, such as racing games, where a controller is preferred. But here's the thing, you can plug your Xbox, or P, I think the PS3 controller works as well, but you can definitely use an Xbox one into your computer. And you can use that if you want so theoretically you get the best of both worlds in your game and if your excuse is i don't want to change controllers or i can't i don't go any good on the pc trust me anyone can make the switch it just takes a little bit of time and effort now the next bit is a pro and a con if you think about it it's the fact that there is a massive range of parts options software hardware and everything else in between to use don't know how there'd be anything else in between, but I'm going to roll with that. Now, this can also be a con in the fact that you don't even know where to start, what all the terms mean, you're just going to get jiggly boofed, a salesman can con you into different things. So, hopefully this guide will help iron out that problem anyway. But there's a lot of options out there, whether you want to build an extreme rig, you want to go crazy, money is no object, or you want to build a performance rig, you want to get the most performance per money, you want to build the cheapest rig that can do some things. You know, all the options are there for you. Also, on the digital distribution platforms such as Steam and Origin, there are sales, which means you can get games on the cheap. Now I'm talking cheap. I paid 18 euros in this Steam sales and I got all of the Grand Theft Autos, including 4 and the expansion packs, as well as Mass Effect 1 and 2. 18 euros! It's nothing, it's pittance. And I got some fantastic games and I really am enjoying playing them. And trust me, playing Grand Theft Auto at 60 frames a second and 1080p is beautiful. Now, if you're into making YouTube videos, it's also faster and easier to record. And also things like rendering and editing videos can be done a lot faster on a good performance computer. 
I've been rendering videos on a laptop and it took about an hour for like 10 minutes of footage whatever way my laptop was. Now I can render 10 minutes of 1080p in 10 minutes. It's ridiculous how fast it renders. So there are just some basic reasons why you might want to build your own PC. There are a lot of other reasons as well. But now we're going to start going into you know, the cons and pros of actually building a PC in comparison to a console. Now, as for some of the cons, and some of these drawbacks are quite large. The first thing is it takes quite a bit of money or, and quite an investment to get started at PC gaming. Now, as for the fact of upgrades, now I need to crush this myth right now. You do not need to upgrade your PC or upgrade your video card with 500 quid to another one every three months. You don't need to do that in order to play on PC. I have spent 400 quid on two graphics cards, the two 560 Ti's, and they can play every game maxed out, and they're going to continue doing that for the next six months minimum, year, and even then I can just turn down the settings a little bit and still get beautiful smooth frame rate, you know what I mean? If you know what I mean. So the fact that an up upgrade is that costly, and even if I did want to upgrade, let's say to a 580, or a 590 it won't cost me 700 quid for a 590 because my old cards can be sold and I can get you know a lot more money for them so it only cost me 300 quid after because I would sell my two old graphics cards so it does take a lot of money at first to build your own PC we'll get into you know the costs and stuff later but the upgrading mate you can sell your old part and get a good bit of your investment back generally almost half of it so I have to crush that myth right away, right now. Now, another con is if you're not very tech savvy, well, you'll get tech savvy very fast by building your own PC, but if you have no clue about computers, we're talking, you can barely turn, like you can go onto the internet on a laptop and you have very little knowledge about it, it's gonna be a very difficult process to build one. But I'd still recommend doing it, but you know, it can take some time and a lot of learning to be able to do it. But also the flip side of that is you learn a massive amount about building your own PC. And while you're building it, you learn all about the different parts, what they do, and all that kind of thing. And you can actually use this information against salesmen. I love when a computer salesman or in a computer shop, someone tries to sell me like a desktop or a laptop. I absolutely grill them on terms and technologies. And I ask them all kind of really odd questions that are valid, but that they won't know. And they just get really annoyed at me. So it's also funny to be able to do stuff like that. Now the other con is that every game has its own system. So there's no like continuous Xbox Live that you add all your friends on and everyone else is on and you can go in and join or squad up in any game. Because PC gaming is so open and the systems are built for each individual game because of this. This means that if I want to play Battlefield 3 with somebody I have to add them on Battlelog on my friends list there. If I want to play Grand Theft Auto, I have to add them on the Rockstar Social Club, I think. If I want to play Team Fortress, I have to add them on Steam. Now, some services like Steam do allow multiple games on it, but or multiple games to work on it, but in all fairness, it can get very frustrating when things like this start happening, and some games have VoIP and some games don't, so you have to have everyone on Skype, and all kinds of crazy things can happen. Now, the last point is that in recent years, particularly in the last two, I think, PCs have sort of been forgotten a bit. I mean, we get the games, the games are great, but optimization and performance and stuff like that has been just thrown out the window for 90% of the games. Because the console market is so huge, developers just focus on building a great console game and they forget about the PCs. The biggest culprits of this are Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Dead Island, which was a fucking joke, Rage, and there's a ton more titles. However, any of the PC developers such as DICE, Battlefield 3, Crytek with Crisis 2, and some other really great games. Saints Row 3 actually came out greatly optimized for PC and it ran really well. But, now lastly, I just want to touch on one last little thing I just forgot to mention earlier. Is that some people say, the game won't work on my PC, or sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's because your computer is shit, to put it simply. I am yet to come across a game that won't work on my computer. If you build your computer properly and with the right hardware, it'll run everything perfectly and there is no question about that at all. Now we must talk about whether we should get a pre-built computer 
or whether we should build it ourselves. And I'm going to recommend, or as everyone does, build it your goddamn self. It's not hard to learn how to build your own computer. It's actually very, very easy to build your own computer. I just had a friend who had built one or two before and he just, you know, showed me the ropes. But I watched one or two internet tutorials and I pretty much had it built myself. And once you build it once, it's a skill you'll learn and it is a very handy skill to know for the rest of your life. Everyone should know how to build a computer or a desktop computer, or at least know how to fix one. So, now that you've built your own computer, it actually is easier to fix it yourself. You know what I mean? Because you know what went wrong, if there's a faulty part, you know it, and all that jazz. Now, even if you didn't know anything about computers before you went about building it, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn fast, and you're gonna learn a lot. And building a computer is easy. You can't put the parts in wrong. Uh, the only thing you could possibly do, really, is put your graphics card in the wrong slot. And all that will make it do, it will still work perfectly. It will just run a lot slower and you'll have to move it into the, the PCIe 16 slot. We'll go over all this stuff when it comes to covering the motherboard and the basics of it. Now, in this guide, we're dealing with Windows PCs only. Uh, personally, I do not like Macs. I do not like Apple software. I do not like Apple devices. I just don't like them. And Linux, I just simply don't have any experience with. So for this, we're focusing on the Windows-based PC. It's also the best platform for gaming. I would say if you want to internet browse, use Linux. If you want to get ripped off, use Apple. Simple as that. But one thing that people say about PCs is that, or Windows PCs, is that there's so much bloatware on them. This is only true, true for a pre-built PC. If you build your own PC and install Windows, that Windows copy is pure and clean. There is no antivirus trials, no software trials, it's just Windows. I mean, you get no bullshit on it at all. So, if that's a reason you choose other options, build it yourself. And even if when I bought a new PC or if I buy a new laptop, for example, the first thing I'm doing is I'm putting in my Windows 7 disk and I'm reinstalling Windows and that thing straight away and just cleaning it off and going from scratch. Now, some of the cons of home building a PC is that they require a lot of maintenance. You have to update your drivers, you have to update this, there's a lot of updating. Mostly updating is the con. And also, now this is sort of a half con, is that if the PC breaks, you can't really take it to somewhere without being ridiculously overcharged. But if a hardware part breaks, if you're worried about warranties, you have warranty on every single part. You can RMA, you know, if your hard drive breaks and your motherboard goes dead or your processor overheats and fries itself, you can RMA those parts. Generally, if, if you're liable for a warranty, if the part fails, you can RMA them or whatever. So don't think because you're pre-building it, you don't get any warranty at all. Each part of your computer has a warranty. Now, lastly, if you buy a pre-built PC, most particularly companies like Alienware, and other gaming PC companies or performance companies. There are some places that will do you a good deal and it won't cost too much, but generally the markup on those things is colossal. You're paying for worst hardware in a fancy case, and that's pretty much it. You're paying for a fancy case or a fancy computer. I mean, there's no need. You can buy it yourself, you can build it yourself, and you can get the performance you want out of it. You're not limited by the restrictions or pricing. I mean, just build it yourself and do it yourself it's much easier and much simpler and you're not going to get ripped off now i know a lot of people think pcs are dark and sinister things but they're very simple and once you understand what's going on it's very easy to maintain run a computer yourself it can be hard to know where to start when building your pc god knows i had to do so many hours of reading but i'm hoping that this guy will sort of point you in the right direction and give you sort of a foundation and the basic knowledge needed to know where to start building your computer, what the parts you need, what you should be looking out for, what you shouldn't be looking out for, and all the information you need to get started building your own PC. So guys, that has been part one of building your own PC, introduction. And as always guys, it's been good talk and I'll see you out.